that's so amazing they help your clothes fit better a little bit hard to find them in neat styles not today <laughs> this bodice has them and it fits amazing what's not to love hi sewing friends i'm karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and in today's episode some neat sewing for you this is a new savannah dress from itch to stitch and savannah is a small town in tuscany italy i've never actually stepped a foot in europe so i don't know the place but it must be amazing this is a dress designed for neat fabrics it has a bodice that hits the waist it's got a v-neckline finished with the facing but the way that you do the construction is a little bit different and a lot more fun the front has an extended piece up here that will wrap over and finish on the back neckline so i always find that super interesting to sew both the front and the back are cut on the fold there's only about five pattern pieces here the sleeves in the design are long and the skirt that goes onto the bodice is an a-line skirt designed to be midi length or below the knee sort of thing mine is a little bit shorter of course <laughs> and there is a regular bust and a full bust option for you to get a better fit with this knit style because the savannah dress is a brand new pattern at each to stitch it will be 20 percent off for the first week so if you like getting your patterns for a little bit less now's the time i will leave you my affiliate link in the description box below now some of you can't find my links and don't know how to get to the description box when you look in your mobile at the video you see the title you see my face and right there next to the title towards the right hand side you'll see a little gray arrow a little symbol if you click on that or you tap on that with your finger boom the whole description box will appear and you can scroll and i always write my affiliate link and you'll see it in blue you click there and that's what takes you there i'm just mentioning it here because i get so many comments from some of you who don't know how to find this and that's how you find it of course if you purchase from my affiliate link i will get a little commission from there and that helps support the work that i do here on youtube i really enjoy what i do and showing you how to put things together gives me a lot of satisfaction when I get all the feedback from you that you've been able to complete your projects by following along but of course it is a lot of work for me and I don't get an income from doing this so the affiliate links is something that really helps me a lot so if you do use them thank you so much for fabrics you need fabrics that stretch at least 50 percent horizontally a medium weight fabric will show the shape of the a-line skirt a little bit more and hold up the structure of the bodice and neckline easier to sew that facing also fabric types are varied you know you can use a rayon french terry that's a good mid-weight fabric cotton lycra interlock athletic knits maybe some ponty if it's not too too stiff i've made two dresses one of them is an athletic knit which i would say is borderline light to medium weight it's not as light as an ity or a rayon spandex for sure but it's a little less than the medium weights i'm accustomed to but i think it works really well you can see it on screen here of course you know i'm gonna love these colors <laughs> red black little bit of white in there but the main color is red it's got a lovely stretch it's got a nice nice drape i think with this type of fabric the a-line skirt is just gonna drape a little more and because it's lighter weight, even though you might be sewing the exact same size, you might find that the fit is a little bit looser. Not that it's going to be super loose and hanging off you, it's just going to be that tad bit looser. Just because the fabric is a little lighter, it's going to take up less space like the fabric itself takes less space inside the garment and the second fabric i used is a light to medium weight scuba it's not the really thick scuba fabrics i do have other types of scuba in my stash that are very thick i would say medium to heavy weight this is not you can see it on screen here it's got a beautiful print it has lovely stretch both vertically and horizontally and it also has some drape not as much as the athletic knit but it's not a stiff fabric so i thought it was going to be perfect you do need some lightweight tricot knee interfacing the type that stretches not the one that's really stiff you need to apply interfacing to the front facing piece and also if you have some stay tape or you can cut your own little strips of non-stretch interfacing you'll need a bit of that to stabilize the back shoulders and the back neckline area on the back bodice piece also if you want to you can use clear elastic to stabilize the seam that unites the bodice to the skirt in my personal opinion i find that extremely uncomfortable i really can't tolerate the elastic touching my skin directly so i have not used that option it was an option in the pattern it's not that you had to sew it but i know some people like that seam to be a little bit more stable in my case I find it's okay on its own. The sizing available is really great from 00 to 40 US and you have a regular bust and a full bust option and when Kenneth designs full bust options for her patterns 
it's maybe one of the few brands I do use that option because for most other brands that offer a FBA front option or a modified front that has more space for the bust, usually the cut line is higher meaning that you need to have a larger cup size <laughs> or a larger difference between your high bust and your full bust. So for each to stitch that is three inches. So if you have a three inch difference, you can, you're on the borderline, you can use the regular or the full bust, you know, it, it, that's where you need to choose and that's exactly where I am. And just from sewing so many other neat patterns from each to stitch that have this option, I know this option works really, really well for me. The other thing that I like is that it just is drafted in a way to give you more space at the bust, but it doesn't really add more volume or circumference to anywhere else. You don't get a larger waist or anything like that. So I think that's really good. So of course I went for the full bust option. The difference with the bodice here is quite visible. The regular bust is a front bodice cut on the fold and it does not have a dart anywhere. But the one for the full bust has a waist dart and goes up to the bust. I think darts are always great whenever I see them. I'm really happy with them. They're so hard to find in neat styles. I don't know why. They are perfectly doable and they do help with the fit so much. Instead of just relying on a lot of negative ease to make things fit, you know. I think it's amazing that the dart is there. And it's my favorite feature of the dress. Apart from all the other features that are super classic, I just think that dart there is gold. And if you have a larger bust, the fit is going to be so, so good, you know? This bodice is fitted, so at the bust you have a bit of negative ease, three quarters of an inch, just slightly less than an inch. At the waist, you have a quarter of an inch negative ease, which for me that's negligible. I would say the waist has zero ease, which means the waist measures around the same as your body. When you, when you measure yourself. So it's a nicely fitted bodice, like a knit bodice should be. I don't like knit bodices that are wide. I just don't think they look very well. Because it's an A-line skirt, you're gonna have more space at the hips. Around five, five and a half inches of positive ease at the hips. When you look at the finished garment measurements chart, you'll see a lot of measurements there, of course. One of them is the length of the skirts. And I saw there that for my size, it was around 26 inches. That is too long for me. I don't feel good in any length below the knee like it has to like just this is my knee and my skirt has to be right above there that's what I like that's how I feel good and I think I'll be dressing like that until like my later years in life I'll still be wearing my skirts like that because that's how I feel good so I knew from the get-go that that skirt needed to be shortened I shortened my skirt by two and a half inches and all I did was take them off from the hem that's all. I lost a little bit of the A-line at the bottom, but I'm fine with that. Of course, I could have used a short and a lengthened line and done it properly, and that would have kept the volume at the hem only higher. But as I generally prefer a skirt with less volume, I thought taking it off from the hem was going to also achieve that. The length of the bodice fits my natural waist perfectly, front and back, perfect. And I know I'm a little bit taller than the drafted height, but I'm very short-waisted. My, my waist is way up here. So even though I'm tall, the bodice fits me perfectly. Maybe if you're way taller than me and you have a longer torso, maybe you would need to add length to the bodice. There is a short and a lengthened line for you to adjust. Same way goes if you are shorter, you might need to shorten that bodice. I would suggest you make a muslin first with any little scrap that you have and see where that bodice is going to be. Always remember that the skirt, when it's sewn on, is going to give it some weight and you have some vertical stretch on the fabric which is also going to make that bodice drop a little bit also so if you sew it and you see it oh my gosh it's so short it might end up being okay with the skirt put on there so it's a little bit of a trial and error type thing fitting here but for me it turned out amazing now about the waist darts I measured them and just by eyeballing them I thought they look a little long and so I just shortened them by three eighths of an inch. Just the tip, I just lowered that tip of that dart by three eighths. And it's always something that I could have changed later when I tried it on and see, no, that dart's wrong, I need to fix that. You know, this dart here is something that you can play with after the fact, for sure. But at least for me, making it a little shorter made sure that the tip of the dart wasn't going to be exactly at my apex. That was a good call. <laughs> About the sewing, the pattern is sewn with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I have done a mix of seams with the sewing machine using a shallow zigzag, and I've also sewn some seams directly on the serger. It just depends on what's gonna work best for the technique, but definitely you, you will need to mix. You can't sew this dress entirely on the serger, especially the details around the neckline with the V and what happens here at the back also. 
I mentioned that you needed to interface this facing and you know I like to block views so you can see that I've cut here a larger piece of fabric that's going to fit my facing piece and I've got my lightweight neat interfacing on top and I'm just cutting along to match the shape of that fabric that I've cut out then I head over to the ironing board and I just fuse all this piece that I've cut out with interfacing it is larger than the facing piece I'm going to need once that's all fused it's all good I go back to the cutting mat and now that the fabric already has the interfacing I place my facing piece on top and I start cutting away now I do this for everything for woven for knits but I think for knit fabrics if you don't do this you might end up with a smaller facing a lot of knit fabrics react to interfacing and they end up just turning out super smaller than what they're supposed to be and it's happened to me in the past and now at this point in my life I just use this method for anything and everything whether it be woven whether it be knit so of course I've done that here also now there's another little section that you need to prepare before you start sewing and you can see here it's the top of the back bodice I cut some strips of non-stretch interfacing and I fuse that along the shoulder seams and now you are seeing that I'm conforming this little strip onto the curved back neckline there and I'm not fusing it right on the raw edge I'm making sure it's a little below that to make sure that at the 3 8 seam allowance there is going to be some interfacing there that is going to keep this neckline stable without stretching out that's a little bit of prep work that you need to do with interfacing before you start and for up close and so personal which is the sewing segment of my videos you'll see how to put this bodice together I'm not doing a full sew along step by step but I am focusing on the bodice and the neckline because I think that's the most interesting and different part of the sewing construction so let's go ahead and see Don't you think this is starting to wear me You've been raided down like hell There's basically five pattern pieces for the Savannah dress. I have the sleeve, but I only have the paper here because I'm not making sleeves on mine. The skirt is cut on the fold front and back. I have actually already sewn the skirt, the side seams, I've done the hem. I've got it all ready to go to sew it onto the bodice once I'm done. This is the front, it's cut on the fold there. I have the option with a full bust, that means that there is a dart here. If you're sewing the regular bust, then there won't be a dart and the shape down here will be slightly different. You have this shape coming from the shoulder going up and that is the neckline that wraps around to the back. Now I do have a sneaky seam here because I couldn't get my fabric to fit otherwise but the back would also be cut on the fold so just ignore that seam it's just a straight seam it's not going to change the fit and this is the front facing piece you can see it's also got that little shape right there for a little bit of the shoulder and then going up towards the neckline there it is a v neckline the pattern has a long sleeve i have sewn one with a long sleeve but for the demonstration i'm only focusing on the bodice i'm actually doing this bodice sleeveless but it won't change anything but the fact that it won't have a sleeve and i'll be finishing the armholes with binding instead I've extended the front piece there and now I'm going to take the front facing piece. You'll find a dot right there. That is where we're going to pivot with the V point. And then over here, the intersection of these seam allowances in this corner will also have a dot. It'll match a dot on the bodice piece. So we'll just put these right sides together. I have done a lot of prep work before starting to film and I have already surged the edge of the facing right there. You've already seen how I blocked fused interfacing onto this one. What needs to happen here is that you align the dot that you see there with the dot that you see under here on the bodice. Make sure they're right on top of each other. Here's the top of the facing pinned onto the neckline and I've put a pin right through the dot coming out right there so everything matches up. As we go down, we're gonna see the pivot area where I have a dot. And just to help myself, I actually drew the seam line with a friction pen so I can follow that really clearly. And I'm using a straight stitch and a 3 8 seam allowance. going to open these seams up. I have the wrong sides facing up and the right sides are down there. I want the right sides together here. So that is what we need to do. Just sew these now. I'm going to align these seams in the center so that they match. So I'll just repeat this. If you're looking at your pattern the same way I am, you'll be able to do it. I'm looking down and you'll be doing that too. Open this up. This is the facing. This in the center are the actual bodice pieces. Open your seam. 
and place them right sides together like that. If you look at it like this, you have the facing, all this interfaced area there on both sides. And on this side, you have the neckline, which is just your normal bodice that's not interfaced. And now we sew this little seam, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Even though this is a neat dress, you do need to be sewing these seams with the sewing machine or else you won't accurate results at all okay so that's sewn and now i'm gonna go over to the iron and press the seam open just kneading everything up basically we have to press this now wrong sides together so it's like that and we can flip the facing over to the inside of the bodice kneading everything up this corner is going to meet that one right there this is how everything looks when the facing has been flipped to the inside and you can see this little bit is going to be sewn onto the back bodice piece. When I was pressing, I made sure to roll the seam of the facing to this side a little bit. So I did that manually and that replaces under stitching. Under stitch really won't work with this technique. It just will mess with the seam allowance in there. So it's not something that we need to do. What I'm going to do actually while I'm still here at the iron is baste by hand the facing down while keeping it super super flat i don't want to raise this and just risk everything getting a little crumpled and distorted okay here you can see my facing has been basted on that's all really nice and neat this section that continues from this neckline that will be on the back actually i have hand basted that on the edge too and i'm gonna keep it like that but in this area where the corner is i had to remark my dot because my dot was on the wrong side of the fabric inside so there it is i'm going to actually stay stitch this area and then maybe an inch and a half higher that is what i'm going to do with the machine all these can actually just stay together with the hand basting that I've done right there. We are stay stitching at almost 3 8 like a hair under 3 8 actually right here. I'm going to do that on this side as well. And now from here, from this corner, I'm going to snip into the dot right there. Not through it, but as close as I can. It'll be the same on this side. Okay, so the two corners are stay stitched and snipped into the dot. At this point, I'm going to top stitch the facing down. It's going to be easy to do now before we have the whole body set up. And I'm going to do it from the wrong side. I'll use a straight stitch. In my case, my sewing machine looks exactly the same. If I sew from the right or from the wrong, it won't make any difference at all. This is how it's going to look on the right side. Super neat. You can see how I've rolled the seam to the inside so that you won't see the edge. And that replaces under stitching in a way. Now, here is my back neckline. Ignore these marks i was trying to place my pattern pieces in different ways remember i fused interfacing onto the shoulder and the neckline because it's white you can actually still see my dot right there that we're going to need to be able to put this onto the front neckline and the original bodice will not have a center back seam at all mine does if you have a fold just put a pin to mark where the center back is in my case i don't need to because i have the seam now i'm going to place my back like this right sides up and i'm going to take my front and put it right sides together here aligning the shoulder seams remember we had snipped into there this snip and that dot is what is going to match the dot that we have on the other side remember that little blue dot i'm going to put a pin through it so i can see where it is that is where this is going to go so just going to put a pin and hold that right there align the shoulder seams do the same on the other side over here put a pin through the dot on the back so i can see where it is make sure to align this little snipped area right there and align these shoulder seams also and now we still have this loose this is from the front bodice remember and this is going to match the back right here align the center backs mine's going to be a little bulkier because i have a back seam on the bodice which is not ideal i just had to do it but don't do it you'll probably have more fabric than me so this can be sewn in one go there will be two areas that you need to take care of here and do a little pivot this is how you put together the shoulders and the back neckline in one continuous seam so here we go shoulder pivot back neckline slightly curved pivot and then the shoulder we're coming to the little pivot area so this is where we be careful that we don't get any packets right here now this is where i'm going to pivot and move all the fabric out of the way and keep sewing
Okay, so here we have our seam done. This is where we have the little snip. When you look at it from the wrong side, you have a really clean, it'll be really clean. You can see the corner there, there's no puckers. Over here, there's no puckers either. So all we need to do now is serge it. Okay, that's how that looks. The seam will be pressed towards the back like that. This will also be pressed down. This is the back neckline. At this stage, you can sew your sleeve in on the flat if you want to. And then once your sleeve is sewn, you can pick up the seam of the sleeve that comes from here and then the side seam in one go, which is the traditional way to sew knits. In my case, this is sleeveless. It is a hack, it's not part of the pattern. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sew my side seam. But before I sew my side seam, I'm going to sort out these waist studs. These will only be on the pattern if you are doing the full bust option. If you're not, then they won't be here. I'm going to start sewing the dart from the narrowest point from the tip because I can really control where I let my needle fall on the fabric so that it's right on the edge and I don't get any puckers there. This is just like sewing a woven dart, no difference. You just do it with a straight stitch, no back tucking at the start, just knotting it by hand. I always want that to be super, super neat. And then I head off and finish at the widest point of the dart. You repeat on the other side where the other dart is. Seam allowance will be pressed towards the center right there. And then I'll continue and sew the side seams at this point. I am doing it sleeveless, but even if I weren't and I was doing the sleeve, I would still sew the side seams at this point because I like to prepare my sleeve separately and then sew it on the round on the armhole. That's just personal preference. That is the way I sewed my other dress that has a sleeve. I have the skirt on the outside and I just slid my bodice inside, matched it all up at the side seam, center back, center front. Make sure that you have the right size of your fabric touching there. And it's just one seam on the round. I'm sewing it with the sewing machine with a narrow zigzag and then I'll serge it. This is the first version I made. I made this one without filming. I was in a time crunch and I just needed to get it done. And this is as per the original, it has the long sleeve, simple hem with a twin needle. I did sew the sleeve in on the round rather than on the flat like I usually do. The top stitching there for the facing, keeping it flat and very neat. There is a waist seam that is meant to hit the natural waist and that's fitting perfectly. And in here, disguised in the print, I have some dots that come from the waist up to the bust. I did shorten these dots a tad by about 3 8 so that they wouldn't land exactly on my apex. The back is simple, cut on the fold like it's supposed to be. On the version that you saw me sewing, I did have a sneaky back seam there. There was just no other way I could get my dress, so I did that. But this one is made properly. <laughs> it's actually easier to sew without that seam when you're sewing this back neckline piece onto there so it is easier to do it as intended and then you have a simple a-line skirt that fits really well mine is a little bit shorter than the original because i didn't want a midi dress for this one i used both the sewing machine and the serger and i have a bit of a mixed seam going on but you saw that all this area had all the details is done with the sewing machine i also have a seam with the sewing machine for the sleeve but the side seams of the bodice and the skirt have been done just on the serger. There's no extra seams there. From the wrong side, you can see the waist studs, removing some fabric there and shaping up towards the bust. There's two of them right there. The regular bust option doesn't have that, only the full bust option. And for a neat bodice, I think it makes a huge difference in the fit. It fits amazing. There's no drag lines on the side. It's really good. Let's see this one on. I pulled out my favorite red shoes to go with. Love it. This is my first Savannah dress. This is the original design, no hacks here. I have long sleeves here. There is a bodice that has a seam at the waist and the skirt is A-line. Mine is two and a half inches shorter to match my preference. This is a light to medium weight athletic knit that has some drape. Here's a closer look and you can see the waist seam really is at my natural waist, both front and back. Love that. I find the sleeves fit my shoulders really well. This V neckline has been finished with a facing that's interfaced and top stitched. And here's a back view of the neckline that wraps around from the front all the way around to the back. There is a center seam there. I've chosen the full bust option and that's why I have waist studs on the front. I think they fit amazing. They just give so much good shaping here and it's great to find on a neat bodice. This is a size 14 with full bust option, blended to a 16 at the hips. You know, red is one of my favorite colors and makes me happy and this is no exception. Love this classic silhouette in a gorgeous print. There's actually no way to lose here. <laughs>
This is my second version. This one has a sleeveless hack. It doesn't really have a sleeveless option, but you know that it's something I like to do. What I did was raise the armhole by about five eighths of an inch, both for the front and the back, and then just blend the curve up to meet the original. I did also narrow it from here about three eighths of an inch, so the armhole is slightly modified. I calculated my own binding piece. I used part of the fabric that had the stripes just so that the stripe here would make some sense with the stripes going on here on the skirt. It is the same fabric, I was not color blocking. And this is a type of binding that you sew onto the right side of the garment and then you wrap it around the seam allowance. So the seam allowance is in there. It's surged on the other side and then it's just stitched in the ditch right there. There's a dog yapping in the background and I just have to keep on filming so please try to ignore it. I have a center back seam that I had to add to the bodice as you saw. I have those seams pressed open, surged separately so that they are flat and create less bulk. Although I do have extra bulk when I joined this area here. So this back seam is not ideal but it was the way that I was gonna get my bodice to fit my fabric, so I've just done it. And with a busy print at the back, you can't really see the seam. I also have my waist studs coming up here, and my skirt is different in the fact that I just chose to leave this stripey area offset to the side. I did wanna have it in the center, and I tried to place my pattern pieces like that, but my bodice was not gonna fit if I did that. So the stripey area is that way, a little bit to the side, and that's fine, and have the same on the front and the back. I really love the vertical stripes here. I think it's really cool. This is a type of lightweight scuba and it is a little bit fluffy, although it feels really light. It's a bit voluminous while not being a really heavy fabric, if you know what I mean. I knew that if I sewed the hem with the sewing machine, it was gonna look horrible. So I have hand hemmed that and that's really nice. I also never like putting a seam through stripes. I just, that's just one of my things. I just cannot do it. So that, I took my extra time to just hand hem that. Otherwise, it's the same dress as the one you saw before. Bodice seam, A-line skirt. I think you can see more the A-line feature of the skirt with this fabric because it's a little bit less drapey than the other one. Although it still has some drape, it's not as drapey. So you can see that they're gonna look a little bit different. I love both versions. I think I like this one the most because the fabric is so special, it's so different. Let's see this one on. <laughs> Pair of heels, I can't avoid it. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Let's see it. This is my second Savannah dress from Itch to Stitch. And it's the same as my first one, only that this one is sleeveless and done in a different type of knit. This is a light to medium weight scuba knit. The print is very interesting. I am not color blocking here. That stripey feature was on the fabric. Here's a look at where the bodice unites with the skirt. And you can see I have vertical stripe feature towards one of the sides, both front and back. I loved figuring that out and the A-line of the skirt is more visible here with this fabric because it drapes a little bit less. Here is the lovely V-neckline, it's so neat, finished with the facing. I used part of the stripe fabric to do the binding for my modified armhole. Sleeveless is a hack, this is not part of the pattern and I wanted the stripe there to tie in with the skirt stripe. My favourite feature about the Savannah dress is the waist start, it fits amazing on a larger bust. It's such a lovely design, classic, great for solids and prints alike. Of course, I'm always going with the prints and I'm very happy with my two versions. Mine is a size 14 for bust to 16 hips. the simplicity of the savannah dress the lines are so clean the design so simple but well fitting which is really important fabulous prints and you're gonna look amazing <laughs> you can also make this in a solid and then you'll see the features even more i'm just not capable of making things in a solid usually it's just super hard for me especially when i've been collecting so many beautiful prints super happy with my dresses you know even though this one has long sleeves i made sure to make it in a material that is not really hot i'm gonna be wearing this for many months this year and the long sleeves are not going to bother me and then this one this is for hotter weather i'll have my arms all free or fresh out in the open like i like it <laughs> let me know what your thoughts about that sir have you sewn them on neat projects i probably can count with my hand the amount of patterns i found that have that being a neat project and whenever i find them i think it's amazing i think it really helps with the fit 
and I know a lot of people that so just absolutely loathe that and I don't know why. If you loathe that, tell me why you hate them. I'd love to understand and, and get my head around it because I've just always had such a good experience with them and I can really see how it improves the fit. But I wanna know, I wanna know, let me know. So the official video ends here. Now I'll just talk a little bit more if you wanna stay for a little bit longer. If you've noticed my voice is a little croaky, it's extremely sore, I've been drinking tea and water and it's not that I'm sick. <laughs> And if you're a woman, you might understand, especially with what's going on and us being locked up and not being able to talk to a lot of people, at least me, I don't usually talk that much every day. I can get out limited amounts of words with my husband and my son. So I, I'm pretty much sort of like busting to talk to people. And yesterday I went to a water park with a few friends, all women. I talked the whole day, the whole day, like from morning to the evening. And because it was a water park and there was water and it was loud, I think I was speaking louder. Yeah, I'm losing my voice. So I hope I can get the next video to you and my voice isn't completely gone. But that is why I'm sounding so croaky today. But anyway, it was so lovely to talk to actual people in real life, like next to you and being able to share experiences. Talking to like-minded people is just like another level of... Yeah, something, it's a rare commodity right now, at least for me in this context, so very appreciated. That's all I wanted to share, why my voice is like that. I hope it wasn't too annoying. When I hear myself, it's a little bit annoying, but I can't do anything about it. Bye and happy sewing. Can I